I feel nervous again. Like yeah. It's been too long, it's darling. Been too it's long. been too long, darling. And here we are again, right on, <laughs> right on time, and right on, um, on brand, <laughs> right on topic. Hi, guys. <laughs> if you're watching this video, you already know what our topic is, so you know why we're saying this. Uh, so it's not a big secret. We sound horrible, I'm sure. <laughs> when Tessa was here last time, I don't know, y'all. She gave me whatever she had. <laughs> Sorry, sis. <clears throat> and she gonna hey, give it to me again. Hey, hey, <laughs> calm down. Okay. You're down to like a 10. You're at a 25. I need you at like a 10. But yeah, all of this is a whole <clears throat> thing. And we're, we were having a lot of post nasal dripping. And it it's was infected. A, it were infected. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're fine, though. But um, oh. it, it's been a thing. It was And awful, we had no guys. voice. I felt like it licked me down two times. It did lick you down yeah, twice. Yeah, like, ugh. And it was a weird thing that only you only really felt bad well for me. I only felt night. bad at night. Yeah. One I time. I did a COVID test. It wasn't that. I know it's not, not I, 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 this is just a very mysterious illness. Well, honey, there are worse things in the world Amen. than COVID. Let me Amen. tell you, this Amen. might be one of them. <laughs> Thankfully, the kids haven't really no. gotten it, though, which yeah. is good, especially the babies. Yeah. Who we are always trying to protect whenever we are sick. about them. Yeah. But we also, Jesus Christ, me, I look back we over here, so I know over here, so if you look, I in this, so. <laughs> so no, the whole time we look like, we, we, we don't a sense when I look over here, so I talk to people. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Guys, we're filming this on a new camera. Everything new. New camera. Mm -hmm. Last time the mic never worked, you know. It's a work? It's a crosses mic. If it don't work this time, man, it don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I really use this mic also so we can upload podcast. it to the podcast, which you guys have been loving. Um, <clears throat> but yes, we're supposed to be looking at okay, the lens. Sister. And that red dot tells us if it somehow stopped recording, okay. which is very useful. Yeah. Yeah. So the last time we had like a fancy camera like this was years back. And you remember I was saying to you yesterday, Wayne took some pictures and he sent it Beautiful to, pictures. to the phone. Yeah. And Tess was like, how you did that so fast? So you plug it in and put it on the computer and then do it for what's so fast. <laughs> That's what I said. And it, I said to Tess, I was like, guess what? <clears throat> Cameras nowadays have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Brilliant. I couldn't believe it. That's, That's what, what I said to Nolan yeah. when he came with the thing. I was like, uh, these have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth? He goes, long time. I was like, ooh. <laughs> But we film on our phones yeah. all the time now. We don't use a camera, but space-wise, it was not working out. And it was time for us to elevate, not just for this podcast, but um, for Wayne, for other yeah. things. But we're not vlogging with this camera. It's too hard. It's too big. It's it too is. cumbersome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and the other day, I will tell you this, I was doing a little editing. I didn't see a major difference. Woo. I said what I said, y'all. Amazing. I'll show you. That's incredible how far phones have come. I'm going to have a, a new phone. <laughs> we need a new phone, <laughs> but we not have no new phone. Anyway, um, how was your week apart from this stuff? <clears throat> it was, well, the kids went back to school, so that's always a bonus in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That was a long break. I wasn't expecting it to be that long. And we did a Easter camp. We did. Four days. Well, suppose camp. we didn't. I don't know. My 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 girl is the type of girl that needs to come out of the house. Like she can't stay in the house. All of mine too. Mm -mm, mm -mm. For their mama's sake. <laughs> For their own sake. But they loved it. <laughs> they loved that Easter camp. They did. Yeah. They did. And um, just basically getting back into the swing of things, and you know, I, I did something exciting last week, but then I did it again this week, mm -hmm. which was starting the gym. Oh yes. Which brought us to our topic today. Literally while we were in the gym, yes, you said it. <laughs> while we were working out and while I was beginning to feel what my body was capable of doing again and starting to kind of feel it wake up in areas that it hasn't been awake for in many, many a moon, <laughs> um, I thought to myself, gosh, this is, this is starting again. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was mm -hmm. like, Sissy, I think this would be an interesting topic. But then... It led us to kind of changing the language around that a little bit to mm -hmm. beginning again. Yeah. So today's topic is begin again. Yeah. One step at a time. One foot in front of the other. I'm really proud of you for starting the gym. Well, it was your, you know what? Tammy is the one that was just like, Sissy, come. You're never like, going to be come. ready. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know them ways that you know when you have to hold your friend and like, come on, girl. You know you said when you're gonna be ready. And the funny thing is, like, I used to love, love working it. out. Like yes. I was, I, mean, I was a fit girl. I was never, uh, uh, what you call it. <clears throat> My fitness was always fluffy. <laughs> but my fit, I could have outrun any skinny I'm not girl. You, to say that. <laughs> you 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 caught me sideways on that one. Um No, but meaning that I, even though I was You're strong. I had body. Yeah. I was fit. Of the two of us, you were the one who loved the gym. I love. I, I loved working out. I love out. what it did for hair. Okay, and I forgot that. Guys. Let me tell you something. Tessie was the one who, when we went on the plane, she was like, "I'll grab your bag." <laughs> <laughs> you remember? No, I just got that part by default because I was always no, because I'm strong. I always got so lifting strong, stuff. So you're like, "I'll grab your bag," and she just fling it up the top, and I'd be like, "How she did that." Was me getting in them, but now I get it. Like you're strong, you were strong. No, I feel like I could lift up my back too. You know, Auntie Marie says she have a memory of me, but just it start walk. I'ma lift up a water coconut with one hand. I can't do that. No. <laughs> Bad step. Bad step. That's still good. I'm strong. She's strong, and um, I just I just think it's it's admirable because you got in there. I mean, you only just had the baby, so this is not. I think we, we should be clear. Like this is a, a, a you getting back into something that you enjoy and making time yeah. for yourself in this way. And that I legit forgot. Yeah, you know, because it's been a while. In since In other I've words, had it's that. not about Tessie snapping back <laughs> because <laughs> it's been eight <laughs> weeks since she's had her baby or however <laughs> long it's been. No, it's it's more. I forgot how mentally um, beneficial. It was for me to be in a space of knowing that, hey, I can move my body. I can mm-hmm. lift this weight. I can do this amount of reps. It's just like a, a, an accomplishment for me. And it, whatever, you know, they talk about endorphins and all yes. that. Yes. It's real, sis, for me. me. Never it's know real. It real. My mental health is connected to it's movement. True. I'm happy to say <clears> that <throat> I don't feel like that was always the case for me, but it is now. What and I can almost feel like... Every day that I go to the gym, it's not like I'm like, yeah, let's go to the gym. Mm -hmm. I don't go to the gym every day, but meaning Mm -hmm. every time that I go. And then I can feel the moment in the middle of maybe an exercise or something where the happy juice turns on. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, these are them endolphins. Mm -hmm. Endolphins. (laughs) (laughs) But you know, it's true, Sissy, you grew up very active. Mm -hmm. Right. Because she's a dancer. Right. You know, Tammy was a dancer for the entire first yeah, chapter of her life. I guess. You know, so you have that form and you have that, that muscle memory Real also. Farm, you know. I, I love farming. Love farm. Tell me see? Pride I'm farm. I like my farm. I will, yeah. do the ex- I will do less reps and get my form right. Yeah. Get my form love right. It. Yeah. Mm. I feel, do you think we need to address this whole thing about you and I talking in our American accent sometimes? Because <laughs> <laughs> there was a comment last time about the fact that... I think maybe we should. Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, sometimes Tessie and I go into our little accent um, and somebody made a comment about it that I didn't even think about. Mm-mm. And they asked if we would be offended if somebody spoke in a was... Chinese dialect. Now, mm. first of all, I mean, first of all, we are not trying to offend no. anybody, Mm-mm. obviously. Mm. It is, and I explained to the person that, you know, and I don't think the person was being no any in any way you know, malicious, rude, mm-hmm. or even cheeky. I think they were really curious. But it brought up a good point because mm-hmm. I hadn't really uh, thought that deeply about, about it. it. Yeah, Because it's something that we've done our entire, our entire lives. lives. And yeah. so what I explained and what we had spoken about as well was the fact that we have grown up here in the Caribbean, like many of you, on American TV, on American TV shows, on American culture, really. Music. Mm-hmm. Music, the whole thing. And so it seeps into our vernacular, mm-hmm. so to speak. And it's the same way like we do it sometimes even. So when we move to England, we do it with that way. And there are certain jokes, by the way, that we only use with a British accent, exactly. which is interesting yeah. too, yeah. because of how it's connected to us. So it's never meant in an offensive way. I And our sincerest and apologies if it if did, it did if offend it offends anybody. anybody. It's a beautiful culture and it's a beautiful part of... How we just like how we go into a patois. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of how we yeah. have been, you know, expressing ourselves for a very long time. Our whole lives. Yeah. And so we ain't gonna stop. <laughs> 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 and we can't stop. <laughs> 
just this week I was doing a Trini accent, which um, apparently sounds Bayesian. But oh, I, I love the Bayesian again, accent. That's another thing. After this week of carnival, I find myself... She going around talking I, all kinds of things. I don't know how else to behave. Talking about fetting. I even, <laughs> I crossed the children the other day in my accent like Listen. this. I said, what you doing? Listen, I'm an honorary Trini, you know. I, I know. love Trini Well, them nearly bad. done with me because the other day when they asked me for name one place in Trini, that I'm going to say the town. Huh? That they're Barbados. <laughs> But thank God, my MTF family love me. I with me. I just understand the geography. It's name not our strength. Don't ask me neither. Mm-mm. And I've I been there name, many, many a time. I can't name the 14 parishes in Jamaica. And somebody tried somebody to shame. Enough somebody for tried to that? shame me about it the other day. When you and shame I said, you? you know, there's a little like shamings. But I was like, you came at you sideways. I just said, I don't know. And it's simple. And that's okay. But I know other things. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. not one of the mm-hmm. things I know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. I just thought we should just mm-hmm. mention that. With love. With love. Yep. So there you have it. Begin again. <laughs> <laughs> Much like this podcast, we've had to begin again. <laughs> Was that the intro? I don't even know. <laughs> so when we started in the gym, Tessie said... Uh, we should talk about starting over. And I immediately said, mm-hmm. yeah, like beginning again. Mm-hmm. And so that led Tessie, our producer, <laughs> down this rabbit hole of the difference between beginning again and starting over. Right. Take it away. So I happed upon this wonderful article, which was part of the Huffington Post. And I don't know, Tammy, will you put in like the, the link or whatever? Yes, Tessie is very paranoid <clears throat> that we must mention must everything. Give people them I agree. But yes. she says that even in the in-betweens when we're talking, what can we just say? So a lot, I will put it in the description box wherever anything yes. was. Yes. Wait, you leave, oh, you have it there. Yes, I do. Virgo. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I met somebody with the same birthday as me last night. Never. Isn't that fabulous? You know me and Protege have the same birthday? Stop yes. it. Do you know that it's the most common month to be born in September? Because of December. And then the most rare month to be born in is February. Your two girls. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Big it again. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Get a coffee. It's going to take a while. <laughs> Tell me, I'm sweating. You can't turn up the AC. More? It's on 22. Oh, you know, I think I'm perimenopausal. No! <laughs> Seriously, does you want me to turn up the AC? I'm dying, oh, darling. It must Hold be on. the working out. Hold on. Kiss me. It must be the working out that gets in all the um, metabolism fired up. Mm. You know what? I can't stop now. That's why I don't do it. I don't do it, boy. So this article I found on the Huffington Post by um, Justine Brooks Frolker. And basically she was saying that every time we start over, we also attempt to erase our past or erase us or at least parts of us. I know many of us are struggling to forgive ourselves of our past mistake or struggles or regrets, or we wish we had been or done differently in the past. But when we look to erase these parts of our story or completely start over, we don't honor who we are today. It's true. So I would not be this happier, healthier, healing person without my past. I wouldn't be this happier, healthier, healing person without my mistakes, so on and so forth. Got it. So I thought it was, a you said the right word earlier, it's a gentler way of looking at things. And there is something to be said about picking up again as opposed to scrap that. Throw it away. I'm going to start all over, right? Yes, it's a nicer <clears throat> approach. It's an easier approach. Right. I mean, it's very rare times in your life you'll have to start over. And yes, that's a whole it, other it will happen. Conversation. Yes, <laughs> yes. But that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. What yeah. we're talking about are the beginning again. Getting back on the, the getting horse. Getting back on the track, getting mm-hmm. back on the bicycle. Mm-hmm. It is just... Gotta a, get up. Yeah. Try, try. <laughs> Ooh, try. I like it. <laughs> um... But it's not about, as I said, <clears throat> forgetting <clears throat> any of it or, or doing leaving away with behind yeah. any of yourself while we do that. Absolutely. So I wanted to talk about some of the examples of what it means to begin again. We spoke about the gym yeah. this morning and I spoke about the fact that I had to start again or begin again with the gym twice. <laughs> 
in one week. Because in one week, because <laughs> I got weeks. sick and couldn't go back for almost a week after the first time. So think about how that could have derailed you. Absolutely. And how it could have been like, well, see, they know, and me sick, so cho, me can't mm-hmm. bother. Because mm-hmm. you went back even when you weren't feeling 100%, because no. you're not back to 100%, mm-hmm. but you knew that, well, I'm not... I just have to start. You just have to, to I have begin to go again. and see what, what this place is about and who I am in this space now, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, starting again or beginning again mm-hmm. in the space of a very short time, it happens. You know, this podcast is Girl. a result of beginning Girl. again, Girl. you know, from many see, many And it times. has transformed Ooh. with it. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going to use it as a whole word. <laughs> No, but it has. It went from yes. seen and heard to Tammy tackles everything, or to, Tammy tackles everything to seen and heard to now Tammy and Tess tackles everything. You know. So who knows what else it will transform? But knows? the point is that we haven't, as this so. Dopinia, you know, girl. <laughs> what time is it? Ain't nobody we'll coming see. home yet. Tammy. We have an hour. Okay, <laughs> it, we haven't forgotten. In fact, everything we have done before has informed this new beginning again. Mm, and on. so that is something to, to, to note that mm. anything you're going through now is going to help you mm-hmm. to begin again mm-hmm. with more knowledge, mm-hmm. more um, it's strategies. Va- it's valuable. Yeah, I feel like it's such a trait as well of anybody who is a multipotentialite, which I know there are many of you um, listening where we know how to begin again. Mm-hmm. And even if we don't know, we're going to begin again. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it means... Uh, Picking up a course that you started, mm-hmm. or or going back to school, going back to school, um, yeah. and it's kind of having this. Um, what was another thing you said? A new way of eating or mm-hmm. moving. Mm-hmm. It could be S- for, savings, yes, financial, financial goals. Yep. Maybe something happening. I have to spend the savings fund or something. It's there. going to happen. It's going to happen. Yep. But you know, we, you we can begin, begin again. again. You know? um, and so it's this idea of just kind of having the courage to do so and not feeling like. Well, me done, try it, and it never works. I'm mm-hmm. not about it again. Defeated. You need, yeah, defeated. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to say to yourself sometimes, you know what? I'm going to begin again. I love this quote. Quote time. Quote time. <laughs> it's by, oh, I should have. Chinonye Chidulu. Chidulu. Please forgive me. I don't know. Though we may not have reached the heights we anticipated yesterday, Today is a brand new day to begin a new climb. I love that. I love that. And it also speaks to the fact that there is no limit to the amount of times that mm-hmm. you can begin again. Mm-hmm. You know? You want to do this one? Quote. <laughs> <laughs> you know how Oprah goes, tweet, tweet. <laughs> she goes, that's a tweetable moment. Yeah. Tweet, tweet. <laughs> Rupi Kaur, one of my favorites, she says, never feel guilty for starting again. Mm-hmm. So you... We're listening this week to Glennon Doyle's um, podcast, We Can Do Hard Things. I know we reference them a lot, but guys, we're on this journey with you. <laughs> so we are podcast listeners. Tessie. Avid I, podcast I, listeners, <laughs> right? I thought about naming this podcast, We Can Do Hard Things too. <laughs> the review. <laughs> because uh, every time we listen to it, we go back to each other and say, X, Y, Z, and that? there's a sister dynamic I that is so that. Yeah. relatable to us, mm-hmm. and, you know, mm-hmm. it's just really great. But she was speaking about how all of us in some shape or form are in some sort of recovery, whether it's recovering from something as, um, like, addiction, which is a little bit more of what you'd expect recovery to be, or recovering from, you know being in a relationship or not being in a relationship that you thought you were going to be in, like all different Or things. any behavior at yes. all. Like but just thinking, you know, well, this is how I do. You can be recovered for just to, about yes. anything. And um, one of the things that I found really interesting, like what you said, is that we sometimes adopt a behavior that we that once served us, whether mm. it was in childhood or in adolescence or whatever. Most times moment, from childhood. In a moment of survival or in a moment that was supposed to protect us. And then we almost become 
synonymous with that as being who we are. Mm, and that could be... Even when it no longer serves us. Right, right. So um, in the case of Glennon, she was talking about her recovery from anorexia. Mm-hmm. And so she was, just to put it in some context here, but she was realizing, she was saying how she had all these breakthroughs mm-hmm. and how she realized that any behavior that we learn from when we're younger, we feel like, as you said, it keeps us safe. And so we take it all the way through our, our life without realizing at one point or another, it's not actually actually harming us. So where guilt comes into that is sometimes you almost have an identity crisis of like, well, who am I without without this this behavior, without this thought or belief, Mm -hmm. you know, and you almost kind of feel like, but I need to to hold on to that because that's so much who I, it's like me saying, I say it all the time, oh, I'm a Virgo. Mm. Does that, it's, it's, it's frivolous, but it's true. It's an it's it's it's, it's a, a it's also example. believing it's also <clears throat> believing all you can do is sing. Pretty do you know much. what I mean? Like feeling like, well, I'm a singer. That's, That's what, what I, I do. do. And mm-hmm. not and saying, well, if something is outside of that, then who am I if I'm not mm-hmm. singing? Who is Tatan Chin outside of singing? And there's a guilt that comes along with feeling like you are um either coming to the end or the beginning mm. of something. And I think it's worth pointing that out. And also, I wanted to talk about the fact that we can sometimes feel guilty based on what other people may think about us beginning again. I think that's what most of the guilt is wrapped up in. And even when we decide to stop doing something, and I talk about this a lot with music, Mm -hmm. I was hanging up so much of my um, fear on what other people thought. And so I didn't want to stop music because... A, who is Tammy outside of doing this? And B, what will everybody think? Like, I'm going to walk away from this, this, and this. And that's you how know? they know you. And yeah, and that's how they know me. Mm-hmm. And, and will there be room for that's me in the world as for. somebody else? Mm-hmm. And and right. it was all, it, I stayed there much longer than I should have because of everybody else. Mm-hmm. Who, by the way, don't actually care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, like sometimes mm-hmm. we get caught up in feeling like, well, what do people think? And da-da. nobody, nobody cares. cares. Like it's in so the liberating. grand scheme of things. <laughs> and your family members, even them who may seem like they care so much and may be judging you or maybe looking at you through mm-hmm. a microscope, even they are like able to zoom out, you know? I love what you said earlier. Please say it for us again. So something that was very helpful to me when I was, when I quit smoking, because again, and this is the thing about recovery with any type of addiction, like you're always in recovery, like when it comes to that. I may ask, that's not the first time you've quit smoking, right? No, but this is, this is probably the first time I've quit smoking and I wasn't like pregnant. Mm. So I would have quit when I was, because I've been smoking a long time. I would have quit probably in my 20s somewhere mm. for like a year or that. two. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the longest I've ever quit for. Mm-hmm. And it not be because of a baby, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. But it was, and I, and I was so crazy to quit in the middle of the pandemic, but it was the best thing I ever did. It was time. It was time. Mm-hmm. And somebody said this to me in a Instagram DM, I think it was, because people be sliding in my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> and she said to me, you can't take that old version of yourself into this new mm. version of your life. And so I was like, like girl... You can't take that old version of yourself into the new version of your life, into the new level. Like old Tammy who used to smoke that many cigarettes a day, I'm I'm too embarrassed to say how many. Mm -hmm. She couldn't survive in the new level that I was being put in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the amount of time I used to smoke cigarettes, like the the time it took for Mm -hmm. me to smoke cigarettes every day. First of all, (laughs) I wouldn't have the time to do it. Second of all, I always had to go outside, like, well, because I didn't want to be near the children. I would even put on a robe. <laughs> no, you guys don't even know the production. The things you will do to serve your own addictions are so bizarre. But anyway, yep. <clears throat> my point Excuse is that me. it was crazy. And that was a point of like, wow, reckoning for me. And it was mm. like, yes, that is so true. She can't come with me to where I'm going. Mm-hmm. And so there's that, that beautiful idea of, of, yes, some parts of yourself you're going to have to shed when you move into a new area of yourself. But I'll never forget that that 
that person just can't come with me. Not a full person, but and that it doesn't version. Mean, it doesn't mean that you're not going to miss some parts of that No, I either. miss it all the time, by the you way. Know? But um, the smoker can't come, is yeah. the point. <laughs> Teresa Tammy can't come. <laughs> can't come no more. She can't come no more. <laughs> it's just like this new version needs needs Tammy to work out. The one yeah. who likes to sit on the couch ain't going to make it. Yeah. She can sit on the couch on Wednesdays, that's Saturday and Sunday. I, that's how I feel about getting back into that state of being active and kind of putting me mm-hmm. um, on, the, on, on the top of the list oh, yeah. for a minute because I really want to play with my girls. I want to have the energy to do that and I really want to not be so and this is not just about uh body mm-hmm. or, or body image mm-hmm. but i want to know that i have the energy to run up and down with them to go in the water with them i want to know that the quality of life that i want to live i'm setting it up now i'm yeah. trying yeah you know so i want to be around for a really long time to see my girls god willing it felt really good this time around when i went to the gym to talk because obviously we've joined the gym many times before um and this is why I also believe in right time and right mm-hmm. place and, you know, um, and being ready, even when you're not ready. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was very interesting that both Tessie and I separately, when we were talking to our instructor about our goals, uh, very, it wasn't, oh, I want toned arms. And we literally it both said... It wasn't a weight loss <laughs> no. goal. We were like, <clears throat> we want to have the strength and vitality the the vigor the darling to to move through this experience Mm -hmm. with all we have we want to increase our mobility Mm -hmm. we want to build muscle we want to be strong i want to lift the baby yeah yeah Yeah. and so that's the difference between being almost 40 Mm -hmm. and being in our 20s too girl Mm -hmm. you best believe you almost darling like (laughs) and and don't fool yourself. We want to look good too, oh. but it was it's it's that's the byproduct mm. of this. It's just that our goals have to be different because I can't depend on myself to just want to look good because I can hide this body very well. You get mm. what I'm saying? Like we're women, we know how to do that. My point is that. I had to change my goal and say, well, no, you know what? I want to be able to do that. I want it's to lift feeling. my daughter. Yeah. Yes. I want I'm to looking be able to for run. a feeling. Yeah. I want to get up yeah. out of the, the lounge chair and jump in the yes. pool. Yes. Or, you know what I mean? Yes. I'm about to have a toddler again. Like, yeah. I need to run after her. So, yeah. I know we went a little off track there, but it's I that think idea. It's right that, on track, that, boo. that version. What new version? <laughs> Or what does this new level that you're moving into, like, who does she need you to be or he need you to be? Like, what's one thing that you could maybe look at right now and say, hey, if, okay, if I want to move into this version, so for us with that in particular, I want to play with my children. What's the thing I, I I'm without running out of breath. <laughs> I want to go to Shea Maria, the third flight of the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Shea Maria has this restaurant at Bogota, and it's like three flights of stairs up if you don't take the elevator. But I want to take them stairs and not be oh, over nah, my kid. I'm going to still take the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> but think about that. Yeah. Like, what <clears throat> does that version that you are moving to or being brought to need you to do? Mm. right now or need you to stop doing <laughs> Love that either sister. or um th- with that said she said a beautiful quote um it was by it's by bal shem tov i don't know if i said that right either but it says let me fall if i must the woman i'm becoming will catch me Ooh. it made me Body teary tell me it, uh, honestly let god i was driving in the car if I must. And I was like, <gasps> yes because Charlie, we always becoming, mm-hmm. and and it leads me, us to this your other yeah. your other favorite quote. I say this quote all the time. I said it in a couple episodes back, I'm sure, but I always feel pressed to remind people. There's a lovely quote that says, "When you jump, one of two things will happen: either a net will appear to catch you, or you'll be taught to fly." And for years, that little quote used to take me true. And then, more recently. <laughs> I remember listening to something come here and said, Boy, the net I catch sometimes, but sometimes the net. <laughs> Just sometimes it needs. Sometimes the net boss and sometimes sometime over jump. And sometimes <laughs> the wing them do not appear. I mean, I flap out hell in the sky. <laughs> I may drop bodo. <laughs> but that's where the quote is incomplete because 
Uh-uh. There's more to the story. You might not have a happy landing. Mm-hmm. You might fall. You might take a tumble. You will chip up yourself. Take a bus up. Yes. Mm. But that is not why you jumped. And so we get caught up in this idea that we jump for this happy landing. We jump for the thrill of the jump. And the not knowing. And the not knowing and, and wondering what will happen is and, and the figuring it out. So I think there's something to be said about changing one's perspective on that. Because you know me, I'm very cautious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't like um, unknown outcomes, stuff like that. And I'm working on that, people. Like That is literally something as we speak. It's a muscle. I am working on mm-hmm. flexing, but... I don't like risk. I don't like. I'm very, you know. Yeah, a lot of people don't test. What if I? What if I turned my view of unknown into basically something that could be exciting? Exciting. Yeah. You know, because one, I think my mommy once telling me that because I get very nervous. I used to get very nervous before I go on stage, and she used to say, you know, your body doesn't know the difference between um, nerves and excitement. excitement. Yeah. So maybe if I just and it's tell true. myself I'm excited. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> to stick up in there, though, and I know you say that you're, you know, um, quite cautious and safe. And, and funnily enough, I feel like I am the same way. I, I just feel like I push past it a little more. Mm-hmm. But guess where I notice how cautious I am? What's my favorite word to say to the kids? Careful. Mm-hmm. Careful. Isaiah says it to me. Careful. Yeah. Careful. Mm-hmm. I am constantly like and no part of that is because I'm like Jesus Christ I'm calculating this risk that they're mm-hmm. taking and how it affects mm-hmm. me okay because and I'm they like need to take the risk but they have to they take have the risk to. of course they won't learn no and them have a drop down sometimes they do even at the oh cost God. of us having to maybe go hospital mm-hmm. which is always my big threat you know I'm always like me you not want to go hospital me tonight, not hospital tonight. <laughs> right <laughs> These poor kids don't know. And it, it pushed me to be like, you know what? Because um, my kids, I'm trying so hard not to say those words all the time because I do believe that it makes us feel a little like, yeah. well, what can I do? Like, if you can't test those things, yeah, I don't want them to. I want them to have, obviously, I, I do want them to calculate risk That's and I do learn, want yeah. them to have a little fear about something. You just something. don't want it to inconvenience you. Yes, I would prefer... <laughs> I'd prefer you if to do you it on a day it. when yes. your father was at home and I was yes. away. but you know, them said <laughs> trouble not set like rain. So things were happen anyway. Up to last yesterday, quick story time. Me and Wayne go walking up the hill and uh, when we come back, Momo actually fell <gasps> Down the stairs. What? Yes, 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 yes. Rolled her ankle. Oh, According to her hair, I'm a drop like breadfruit. <laughs> <laughs> she said, oh, I said, I drop like one breadfruit. I had a tiny idiot. I pe- pe- get up. I fix up myself. Me, me, I was like, Maureen. Is she okay? She's fine. But like, you know, we Is were. Is ankle okay? Yeah, we iced it. I was rubbing, what's it name? Not Benge. Well, Voltaren, Voltaren, Voltaren. We we'll wrap it. All kinds of things. Today she's feeling much better. Oh yeah, she's having a drop like one breadfruit. I said, How are you dropping on me? I guess. <laughs> me just a guess. <laughs> me said, Maureen. Later she tells me the real story. She goes, Me did a near man walk. <laughs> oh, anyway, Moses. I say all this to say that I literally said to him, I said, yo, trouble not set like rain and mm. you can be going ag- along your day and then boop, something mm-hmm. just changed. So whether or not you are careful, yeah. things won't come to disrupt your life and then test your limit. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's so no true. joke. Anyway, that's why we fall like a breadfruit nine times and get up <laughs> ten. <laughs> like a turd breadfruit. Look My here. favorite type. Look here. Yeah. If this says negative connotations. Uh, to beginning again can sometimes also stop us. So what enter the chat. Negative connotations come up when we are starting again or we believe we've begun again a little too much. And, you know, that can lead to 
either us or or the fear of people saying, "Oh my God, she has, she's she's failed at this," or she has it's a lack of discipline. Or in your you're in a chat as well. You know, how many times am I going to do this? How many times am I going to do but this? But if nobody was watching us, we wouldn't have no no Tammy. I don't feel like we'd have any trouble. I would no, sir. especially with the gym, no, sir. and the healthy eating. But I'm telling how you, how much time you go buy lettuce? Yeah, <laughs> when we not eat, and it's how go buy it in our fridge. Tell me one head of broccoli, my joke, my throw this morning because it had ginger pan. And broccoli dear. And I tried. Mm. Press her too. <laughs> My point is this. It had, it's, yes, there's our internal, ch- our internal chatter, but I really feel that is formed by, yes, there comes a point where you're tired of doing it, but mm. I really feel like a lot of it comes from the outside and it's normal. Mm-hmm. But it's like we have to get to a place and we have to flex that muscle that says, F them. Because right? it's me suffering if I don't do it. Yes. Yeah, not them. So it, you said failure, lack of discipline or lack, lack of, of motivation, motivation or taking, or taking action. actions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or thinking about others. How does me beginning again affect other people? Like, you know, does this affect my family? Is this going to affect my husband, my children? Are we going to move city again? You remember how mommy mm-hmm. did one time mm-hmm. move? I never forget that story where she moved to England. And then she said to daddy, no, we need to move back. And mm-hmm. daddy said, I'm not doing this again. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it can disrupt your whole life, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there are these things to consider. But the biggest one of all to me is shame. That's the biggest negative connotation with starting again. With a lot of things. Yeah. With a lot of things. That's that's the underlying kind of... um, Emotion. Yeah. How am I here again? Yeah. Oh my God, I start in the gym again. I failed again. I'm going back to school again, but yeah. I'm I'm 40. How can I be going back to school now? Um, or I'm taking too long to finish school. Yeah. yeah. Or I haven't applied for that job. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, or I didn't I didn't do what I say what I was gonna do. Yeah. You know? But how do we move past that? Yeah. Yeah. It's a quote time. <laughs> quote. And this is how you move past it. It's a quote by Alan Cohen, and it says, Do not wait until the conditions are perfect to begin. Beginning makes the conditions perfect. You say this a lot. I, I mean, do. You, you, you speak a lot about, Tammy calls it perfection paralysis. I don't call it that. It's somebody on the inter- internet call it that. you the first person <laughs> I heard it said it. So Tammy says. <laughs> That's who I heard it Tam- from. I'm going to write a book called Tammy Heard Somebody Say Once. <laughs> I'm going to write a book called My Mama Said. <laughs> Things My Mother Said. Yes, which are just actually famous <clears throat> quotes. Um. But yeah, perfection paralysis is something that it's can, real, folks. It can stop you. And mm-hmm. you can get stuck in research. <laughs> you can get stuck in just <laughs> excuses. You can get stuck and you can all package it up well. You want it to be perfect. You want it to be packaged. Yeah. So yeah. we could have waited for, you know, perfectly packaged <laughs> to come to have started yeah. this or we started on the phone. Right. So it's messy action. And so that's how you move past all of the shame. You just say, hey, I'm putting that down because if I don't do this, I have to answer to me, yep. not you. Yep. I know like for me, um, beginning again, one of the fears or one of the things that always surrounds that for me is failure also, mm. which is again, shame, right? And um, it's that sitting down and thinking about what I failed last time mm-hmm, at it. But mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't I didn't complete it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't get to where I wanted to be. I didn't um reach where I wanted to reach. Whatever it may be. I didn't lose what I wanted to lose. I don't mm-hmm. know. What whatever it may be in your life that has sometimes kept me mm. from feeling like I legit have a right to begin again, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. It's also deservingness, right? Mm -hmm. Like feeling like you deserve to have a chance to begin again. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, I will say that I think it's a matter of kind of taking inventory, kind of taking stock of the patterns that I am doing in my life that are showing up. And, you know, I think you get to a point in life at Mm -hmm. a certain age where you stop looking at your life from... It's like you step. It's like you step back and observe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're in observance of your life more mm-hmm. than just living it as and, well. And looking at everybody else all the time. Exactly. Like, you get a little less concerned with that, and you start to say, "Well, what are these? I'm, I'm, I'm about to enter into this new era mm-hmm. of my life. 
you have to take a look at yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and what are those patterns that have held me back? What are those ways of thinking that have held Beautiful. me back? Am I making good use of that information and implementing it? Like Tammy was saying before, there's so many times where we come to do something here to start a podcast and there's something that is needing to be figured out or that isn't right or whatever. But she's using that information every single time to inform her next move yeah. and the next time that we come here. So unless I'm implementing or correcting or adjusting my path to then say, oh, well, <clears throat> this is what I know to be true of myself yeah. to move yeah. forward, then you're wasting the golden opportunity. I remember somebody said that failure is one of the greatest teachers. It is. And it really is. Yeah. Use it. And not only that, you take you wherever you go. Yes, and you I do. think sometimes we have a tendency to want to blame everybody around yeah. us for why we are where we are. Or, or the run away situation. to somewhere else. Yeah. But you're just going to come back into the same thing. Oh, one of my favorite questions to ask, um, especially when I used to have to hire people, was... Why did you get fired from your last job? Or oh, why did you favorite. leave your last job? Mm -hmm. Or what was it? What happened? Because chances are that was exactly what was going to happen here. Yeah. And it's always very informative, like, to know what the issue was. And almost 100% of the times, the issues that they had at their last job, the they that would have yeah. with this job. Yeah. And it may be packaged differently. It might look like a little different on the side, but the core thing was always the same. And so the same thing is you. And that's why when you talk about patterns, it's very important. Mm -hmm. What you take you everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. So what are the things you keep bumping into? Are you the person who says things like, why, you know, I don't know, my friend them never do this or whatever for me or, um, you know, say I X, Y, and Z or them always, mm -hmm. what, well, I don't know what the thing might or be. Or what are the things that you keep hearing about yourself? All that too. Yeah. I do want to know what you think about this because we have been talking a lot about how failure can stop you from beginning again. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that success in a field can stop you from trying oh, again too. Yes. You remember because that you're that scared. Said, yeah. That you're actually afraid of your full Greatness. Yeah. yeah. Marianne Williamson said that. I quote. believe in that too. And it's like, if you have if you have done well in a field, you almost don't want to, I imagine like even like if you're like a marathon runner and like you did like a really great time, time. the last time, it might stop you from wanting to do it again because you hold on to this great time mm -hmm. and you don't want to spoil what you did and mm -hmm. you're missing out on the whole experience. It's not mm -hmm. about the time, it's about the whole experience. Mm -hmm. And so I think that you might have to you may think, oh no, and that's not my issue, but you may want to even look at the reverse and be like, Oh well, is it because I've I've done so well in that field that no, I don't want to even touch that again? You hmm. know, interesting. Would dude. you enter the voice again? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just because because I did it, but it's like I'd have to win again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like it's all right. I'll just leave. And I'll look, leave what and, I did. And let me let me let me let me say this. I had an amazing time. Yeah. yeah. On the voice, like a very good experience, but I don't think this version of Ooh. Tess, this person that I am now, because that was Tess 10 years ago. True that. Would, um, I don't think that is my highest priority no. anymore. But what I'm saying yeah. is that you would feel the pressure Most definitely. to do what you did in a different meaning. You see Absolutely. what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to show you how even doing oh, that's well a lot to feel. unpack. Yeah. <laughs> Even doing well in a field can stop you from wanting to <clears throat> revisit that, you know? Yeah, but I'll go one I'm step I'm not further. saying that that's what you should be doing with no. your life. but No, but it, it, I think even with that, and I've spoken about this before, with the, um, the success that came with the voice was incredible pressure mm -hmm. and incredible pressure to live up to what I thought should be or what others thought should be. And that put me into a state of absolute just terror. Terror. And I just became like a little crab and I went, nope. Mm -hmm. And I just, cra oh, sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. I crawled back into my little hole mm -hmm. and I was just like, I'm not, I, I, can't, I can't do this. For so many years, yeah. I was paralyzed by There's that. There's absolutely nothing worse mm -hmm. than other people's expectations of you. <laughs> I cannot tell you the amount of like, times people come up, oh my gosh, how come we're not hearing your song on the radio? How come we're not seeing on TV? And the, the, my little heart would just be like, I just released a song the other day or I just whatever and it's just it is what it is you know and I sympathize I remember the the freedom that I got from finally saying um I don't have any new music I don't have any, 
I don't have anything in the works. Or I'm not really sure why you're not hearing me on oh, the radio. Man. Or I'm not sure. Yeah. Like, I just remember, like, or having, we've spoken about this before as artists, feeling that pressure to always be busy or doing something or in the, the throes of recording something. And I remember that I, I felt so free one day when someone was like, so you're working on an album? And I went, nope. nope. And it's yeah. not because I don't love singing. And it's not because I don't love what I do. And I do believe that singing is one of my gifts. It's just because I had to release what my expectations were of that outcome, as well as everybody else's, you know? Beautiful. And and we have to do that in so many areas of our lives. Oh, and, and you have to do it many times, yeah. not and just once. And you may relate to that on so many levels. Like, yeah. oh, just what expectations are you hanging your own self on for other people? Mm. You know, like our expectations of ourselves are hard enough. Mm. It is so difficult when we start to think about making everybody else happy. And that's why we talk about it so much because we have lived our lives in that way for so long where we literally were so concerned and we still are to a large extent. It's it's a part, it's, it's so deep and it's so much to unpack, like you said mm. just now. And it goes into a lot of childhood stuff and people pleasing and all these things. But there has to come a point where we release and ourselves proving. and people proving. Mm-hmm. But there has to come a point where we free ourselves and get courageous and live for who we want to be and, mm. and live for what we want in our lives. And it's much easier said than done. It is. And we're going to watch our children probably go through the same things because no matter how we try, they're going to have their life experience and they're going to have to figure these yeah. things out. But that's why we have these conversations. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Always, always to remind each other that we're not alone. Amen. <laughs> Quote. It's never too late to become who you want Ooh, to be. Right on time. <laughs> Girl, it's like, like a time I, <laughs> I feel the spirit. Begin again. <laughs> okay, it's never too late to become who you want to be. I hope you live a life that you are proud of. And if you find that you're not, I hope that you have the strength to start over. That is from The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Beautiful. I love that. I hope you live a life that you're proud of. Isn't that what it's oh, about? And if you're mm-hmm. not, I hope you have the strength to start over, in this case, begin, begin again. again. And what is a life that you're proud of? You know, what does that look like? And it's not too late to start telling that story. I don't care how old you think you are. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you're, you know, we have women who are women and men, by the way, who are watching this, some in their late teens. Some in their 70s. I love it. And that's beautiful. And they too are saying, you know what? It's not too late. I remember when my mom was in her late 60s. And I'd say to her, I was like, you know, you have like a whole lifetime ahead of you, right? Mm-hmm. Like God willing, you have a whole lifetime. And she's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, if you think about it, like zero to 20 is a whole lifetime. Mm-hmm. No, in, in, 20, in those 20 years, you don't even get to live some of that life for yourself. You're a child, X, Y, Z. From 20 to 40 is a whole lifetime. From 40 to 60 is another mm-hmm. lifetime. So from 60 to 80 is another lifetime. Mm-hmm. And then beyond. But my point was just saying to her, even you at this stage have a whole lifetime. So you have a whole story to change and tell, re-envision, re-imagine how you want. Yeah. God willing, you know, um, but start today. Yeah. Absolutely, and I'm just going to quote the Bible. Oh, come on. Somebody in the gym said to me the other day, I love when you bring up Matthew. <laughs> Mr. Tessie, always I'm going to bring you back to the Bible. from the book of Isaiah, Oh, when he says God wants to do a new thing. Mm-mm. You know, so if he is for beginnings too, why Mm-mm. shouldn't we be? And Tell him about the old wine in the new song. No. <laughs> Me don't know the quote, I mean, uh, you can't put old wine in a new wine sack. You can't put new wine in the old sack. No, you can't. Yeah. That means that you you have to do away with certain old ways yeah. to bring in new things. And then I want to also speak to the fact that God can use who you are and where you are and what you are right now. Right now. You know, he speaks about the, the, the potter and... You know, the potter making something out of the clay. And he doesn't discard the clay. He just begins again with mm-hmm. the same clay. You know, so that's in Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. Come on with it, Tessie oh, Jakes. I did my Bible, <laughs> Tessie my Jakes. Bible service. <laughs> this month. No, but seriously, guys. Yeah, like, no, true, true, I true. think, you know, we're always waiting on something to feel so worthy. True. You're worthy. 
And I know it's really, really hard to accept. I know it's really hard to let that sink in. It's hard for me too. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we're worthy. Mm-hmm. Just as you are now in this moment, with or without the job, with or without the man, mm-hmm. with or without the woman, with or without the child, the child, yeah. with or without the house, house. or car, <laughs> yeah. with or without the degree, yeah. with or without whatever it may be, please know. And I know it's hard because our world puts such a focus and such an importance on the outer and the other, but you are worthy in this moment right now and you can be and be used and be a vessel Mm -hmm. for something wonderful now right now beautifully said it put me in the mind of that amazing Alanis Morissette songs that says that I would be good (laughs) that I would be good yeah even if I had nothing oh oh I'm gonna cry go go look for that song (laughs) because that's what it's saying it's saying if I that I would be good regardless yeah even, Even when, when I'm, I'm not myself, myself mm-hmm. that I would be good. Even, Even when, when I am overwhelmed, overwhelmed. Mm. that I would be loved. I love that I love song. That. So many great, great, great um, words in that song. And if you need some encouragement right now to be reminded of what Tessie just said, that you are worthy just as you are, that might be a really good listen. I remember one time doing a, a yoga class and that song came on and Bear I Balin. burst into tears. Because, Opened up them chakras, yeah, girl. It was a hip hop. I was in the pigeon. <laughs> Always Tessie, damn I, hip-hop, I, I was not in the middle. pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know the pigeon pose. <laughs> Woo. But, um... Mm. What we're trying to say is that all that you are, all that you need to be is is happening now, mm-hmm. you know? And so just one foot in front of the other, friends. Yeah. That's all. Amen. One breath and the next. This quote is by Louis Lamour. I was going to say Louis. <laughs> <laughs> well, if the last name is Lamour. How do you know if it's Louis or Louis? Well, it look French-ish. No, and but there's no, there's two different ones, right? There's a French Louis that, and a Louis. But the French people don't say my name is Louis. They say Louis. But some people call you ever hear Louis, Louis is with a W. You ever hear about Louis Vuitton? L-E-W-I-S. It is not Louis Vuitton. A Louis. <laughs> a Louis the man near me now. <laughs> okay. There will come a time when you believe everything is finished. That will be the beginning. Amen. I love that. And as you said here, let's get excited to be able to try again. Amen. And I want to I wanna hear, we want to hear from you. What is that thing that you are going to begin again? Please mm-hmm. share with us in the comments. Yeah. Um, apart from going to the gym or being healthy and lifestyle, what is that one thing you think you're going to begin again soon? Yeah. Or it might today? be that you want to laugh more. No, I'm asking or you. I mean, Jesus, I think you ask the people that have to comment them. I am going to begin again today with trying my darndest. There's a version of the parent I want to be, right? Mm. Oh, don't. Um, Every day I begin again with parenting. That's the truth. And um, I think I just want to just continue to figure out the best way to connect with my children Mm. and not just correct them. Mm, I love that system. <laughs> you know, Mary and them always say you got to connect before you I correct. I love that. Mommy. Yeah. And so I'm going to mm-hmm. be looking for ways again today to do that. I think that I am going to, and I've said this before, but it's beginning again, right? I want to be more present in my life. What does that look like? It means that I'm not in my head. Mm. I'm not trying to figure everything out. I'm not trying to figure all the things out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, well, my, my, my daughter is right here. Or, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. either of them or my mm-hmm. husband is right here. I would like to be more present in my life and to really see, feel, and experience what is happening in my life. Because you know what? It's a really special time, especially when you have those kids that are at this tender age. And I, I'll never be prepared for how quickly yeah. that passes. I look at Ayla, and Ayla is cooing and smiling. She's a baby and just born. She is wearing, she's 
gonna be three months next week and That's she's so like wild. almost in six months close like <laughs> wild. so I really need to kind of yes I have to figure all the things out but I don't have to do it all at once yeah and not while I'm feeding and my baby not while I'm feeding my <laughs> or baby playing or tea. playing or you know when Zaya wants me to watch a show with her she really actually wants me to watch something with her she doesn't want me on my phone mm. I remember how we used to get excited when mommy or daddy would like you know, we were Engage watching us. a show yeah. and they'd be like, oh, look at what's happening. We'd yeah. be like, oh my gosh, you like You're this too. This. You're in it with us, yeah. You true. Know? So I would like to begin again being present in my my life. I love that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a very random thing I want to begin again that's not like a big personal growth thing. My garden. I'd love to begin yes, growing to vegetables that, again. Yeah. yeah, and I'd love to reap them. And what's your like, <laughs> <laughs> what's like your non- um, Self developmental um, thing. I would like to get out of the house more. Because <laughs> <laughs> even though I am a hermit, I do like it and I've never regretted it. So, there you go. Yeah. All right. I, I love like that. that. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And <laughs> I have looked at the entire time no. over there. I will crop you out. <laughs> That's who I've been speaking to myself. <laughs> We're so sorry if you see us drift. We don't know what the sound sounds like. <laughs> Every week they're like, don't worry about the sound, Tammy. Entire I time. Got to worry about the sound. Over there. Oh. <laughs> I might hide them across from my looking at a little something there. Chow. Is one almost looking the red thing or no, the, the, the lens. lens? Oh. <laughs> Either way, me I look. No. <laughs> East and west. <laughs> I need to get blinds because I think for a portion of this, I'm doing this. I need sun, sunglasses. Uh, sunglasses and yes. yes. Um, guys, thank you so much for coming through for another uh, video, another podcast episode. If you're listening on the podcast, thank you so much for tuning in there also. And thank you for being patient and gentle with yeah. us while we recovered. And thank us for being patient and gentle with each, ourselves oh, while we recovered. Because let me tell you, girl, there was a moment we was going to be hard on ourselves. <laughs> and we said, no, we ain't well. Yeah, I was coughing up my tripe. Yeah. Quite and literally. And Tony Tony, you know, when we call her, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Tessie, I was down and off. out for the count. Hi, oh, man. <laughs> oh, girl. You are right, Teddy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you You good? That's not true. I was man, really off. I don't think I'm going to be <laughs> I was like, no problem. Anyway, but we are back this week, and we <laughs> hope we're going to be back next week. I make no promises, you know, because <laughs> who knows what's going to happen this week. But no, we are going to be back next week. Hell or high water or any type of stuff that's happening here. I can't stand you. <laughs> I <know. laughs> Because you know it's true. <laughs> Did we say everything? Bye, bye, like, bye. Subscribe and like, comment, and share. notifications and blah, oh blah, etc. Blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs>